Hey guys, All In Crypto here and welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another YouTube video. I hope you've all had a wonderful weekend so far. Today we're going to be diving into our daily cryptocurrency market update and we've got lots of really interesting things to share with you. We will of course be looking at the Bitcoin chart, looking at the overall cryptocurrency market, diving in again showing you the dollar and Bitcoin correlation because Bitcoin and its chart is only really one side of the story um, as it is pegged against the dollar. The dollar is the um, adversary, if you will, of Bitcoin. We're also going to be diving into a number of the main headlines gripping the cryptocurrency market at the moment, talking about the traditional financial space as there is a huge correlation. And we are now moving in sync with your traditional financial um, sector, really all down to monetary policy. You know, March 2020 onwards was very accommodating um, time period for markets, given the fact that the Fed, by their own admission, many of the central banks out there essentially came out and said they're going to flood the system with money. We're now at the other end of that and moving into monetary tightening. And that monetary tightening and what it looks like is essentially dictating the market action. We've shown you that by bringing up Bitcoin um, with the NASDAQ, the S&P um, and a number of other things. I also want to talk and we'll do this um, at some point in the video about what the EU is currently doing. EU agrees on landmark law aimed to force big, aimed at forcing big tech firms to tackle illegal content. We'll get into this article because this is, um, I think there's a lot more of this sort of censorship to come and who gets to deem what is illegal um, content and the fact that this is now law and the EU have the powers to go to your big companies like Google, like YouTube and say, look, um, if we don't like what this individual is putting out, you can't uh, facilitate them as a platform putting out that content. Um, otherwise, we will essentially come down on you with the might of the law and heavy um uh fines involving money and this is scary if you ask me you know it's kind of another loss for freedom of speech um yes there are definitely cases where content should be taken down but there's also a huge argument that you know th this is it, it, it it's not um great but we'll talk about it all in this video so let's start by taking a look at the overall cryptocurrency market we are still having a bit of a down day. Um, of course, this is led by Bitcoin. Markets are very easily moved up on the weekend. Um, we'll take a quick look at that MACD cross that we were looking at. You know, you are looking like you are potentially going to enter a bearish cross, um, and this could see further downside. You guys know that we are very cautiously optimistic on the cryptocurrency space. Certainly at the moment, we're cautious, um, optimistic over the long term, just simply because, you know, this is a tech that is so, so early on its adoption curve. And I think there's a lot of money that still has to get rolled into the cryptocurrency space. And I actually think there's a merging coming with your failing traditional financial system and crypto. And I'm very optimistic um, moving forward. I just think in the short term, like I said at the start of the video, we're very dependent on monetary policy um, and kind of macro markets. And I don't think they look or I don't think at the moment there's particularly the breeding ground um, for a flourishing runaway bull market, certainly not in your equity and sort of risk on sector. I think there is an argument for commodities doing very well over this time period, um, but we will see. And I actually don't think that the Fed or any government at the moment are really going to be able to tackle inflation, even with interest rate hikes. That they can, they're very limited with just how far they can go to start with. Um, and yes, the Fed have come out and they've said things like, you know, well, look, we are willing to. Uh, crash markets if that's what it takes essentially that's uh, paraphrasing um, but at the same time you know they also have a lot of debt that they have to service uh, and if they start upping interest rates it becomes a lot harder to service and it's already a huge part of the budget um, but that's um, sort of on a macro level um, that we're talking so this is essentially the structure that we've been in now for the best part of I think three months you have and we have been saying to you look Markets are kind of quite good at actually giving you a signal um, or a direction. And just look how many points of contact. You had more points of contact with the downside trend line than you have the um, upside trend line. You know, you can see you've only had really three or two if you want to count it. Um, and then you can count this one. And you've had far more. So your markets are almost telling you that they want to come to the downside. I'm not particularly worried. You know, we ha I have kind of said that, look, I kind of a bit of me wants maybe a potential capitulation event, not to the severity of what happened in May. Um, but something to really get people attracted back into markets um, because there's a lot of people sat on the sidelines at the moment. Lots of people sat in stable coins, including myself. Um, 
you know, really waiting for the opportunity to present itself. And, and, and there is going to be huge opportunity, guys. Like I say, crypto isn't going anywhere. And in actual fact, I want to pull up this tweet from Will um, Clement. Year-to-date performance, Shopify down 60%, Netflix down 60%, PayPal down 50%, Facebook down 40%, Arc, um, which is an ETF, I believe he's referring to, um, down 40%. Um, Nasdaq down 15, uh, 14%. And then, of course, Bitcoin is only down 13% year-to-date performance that's pretty good and he highlights here despite unprecedented macro geopolitical uncertainty bitcoin is holding up quite well on a relative basis it absolutely is and in actual fact you know considering this is just supposed to be a nothing industry that there's not a lot going on and you know it's very niche and speculative it's held up very very well and i actually could definitely envision this just being a big continuation structure you know you had sort of a similar thing take place over here you know, that's what I'm potentially looking at that we squeeze to the upside and get that continuation. I think that's largely going to come with um, sort of a clearing of a lot of the uncertainty that we've got on the table. Very quickly, you've got the dollar in green, and we've been showing you this daily, and you've got Bitcoin, of course, in Bitcoin orange. You can see just how apparent the correlation is here. You know, yes, there are some pariahs on a day-to-day -day basis, but if you look recently, what I'm talking about is this zone here. You can see, and even today, Dollars coming off slightly. Dollars had a great run is around about that 100 level that I'm actually expecting it to rest at and you're getting a maybe potentially an uptick. But if the dollar continues up, what do you think Bitcoin is going to do given the correlation that we've seen so far? Um, and of course, there was a, for a brief moment, you know, the NASDAQ was going down, the S&P was going down, Bitcoin was going up, but that correlation has very much been kicked back into touch. Payment company Stripe enabled crypto payouts in USDC. Um, a select group of creators on Twitter will be the first to use the service via the Polygon network. So they're going to use Polygon because, of course, it was a lot cheaper than Ethereum um, to use USDC on that. But USDC is also on Algorand. It's on uh, many other cheaper blockchains. Um, USDC is going to be here for a long time and play a crucial role, continue to play a crucial role within the cryptocurrency market. It's already fifth, uh, only um, to Tether, which has nearly double the supply. But USDC, and we spoke about this, and one reason we know that crypto is the future is because the likes of BlackRock are now the main custodials of USDC. Um, and before that, you know, it was Goldman Sachs that were behind it. Um, and many of your big institutions are far more involved in the cryptocurrency market than they lead you to believe. Let's move on to the um, traditional financial news, and then we'll talk about the fact that EU are now essentially tackling illegal content. Um, whatever they deem to be illegal, I guess. Uh, Five-year Treasury yields hit 3% following Powell's comments on rate hikes. So they're talking about Treasury yields. We've spoken to you guys about the yield um, relationship and your bond relationship. Your bonds sy symbolize debt, which is going down at the moment, so the yields have to climb to make it more attractive. There's an adverse relationship there. And debt continues to fall, given, you know, you can almost look at bonds as kind of a voting mechanism on how they think the economy is going to do into the future over the, the time horizons that the bonds are for. And at the moment, they're not doing very well. Um, and this is a reflection of a, you know, very high inflationary environment. And of course, you know, potentially a slowing down of um, the economy, which is what the Fed are trying to do to combat inflation with these interest rate hikes. And I don't think they're going to be very successful. In fact, I think they're going to tip us into something that's probably quite stagflationary, where we have the monetary policy really hurting many sectors out there that kills off demand in that um, aspect but then you still have huge demand of course people have to eat and stuff like this and this is where we're seeing a lot of the rising in um, prices that they I don't think are going to be able to do much about. I've heard talking about a 50 base, basis point rate hike in May. Um, they should you know I absolutely think that they should do a 50, 50 point basis rate hike because they're well well behind um, and look Inflation, I think, is going to really highlight the failings of the financial system. But I'm, uh, you know, I would rather they maintain this, um, even though it is a one big Ponzi scheme, the fiat system, uh, and it really is. You know, it's a social experiment that's been going on for over forty years now. Um, it, it, it's, it's also the failing of the fiat system, and uh, many people out there, you know, they 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 aggressively want this to happen. There's a lot of pain that comes with that. Because what does everybody hold? What do we use to support the economy? What is everything measured against? Failing of that is is catastrophic. Um, and I, I kind of don't want that to be the case, but it is, in my opinion, an eventuality that is going to happen at some point. Um, and, and, you know, we're starting to see the, um, the kind of 
um, failing of the system at the moment. And if you guys didn't watch that video I did, it's uh, pinned to my Twitter. It's an interview I did with Francis Hunt, who is the market sniper. And we talk about, um, you know, the debt-based system and how it's coming to an end after a sort of 40-year plus bull run. Um, but this is going to be interesting. We'll see. It's it's 50 basis points I think the market can handle. Whether it handles any more than that is another question. But this is what I mean about, you know, I think on the short term, we're in for quite a bit of chop. We could see continuation to the downsides while I have an allocation of stable coins. Um, but I'm long crypto regardless. Just at the moment, I'm playing things cautiously because if I can accumulate at a cheaper price, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, and of course, I think that cheaper price is probably going to be driven by what the Fed may or may not do. Fed dashes cold water on shock and or hikes of um, 75 basis points. 75 basis points, I mean, that, that, that would be better than 50, but that, you know, then you, you'd know that the Fed were getting serious, um, which they're supposed to do. They're also talking about reducing their balance sheet. I don't think they're going to get around to reducing their balance sheet. Who's going to buy that? Um, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. The last thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about was the EU um, agrees on landmark law aimed at forcing big tech firms to tackle illegal content. The European Parliament and EU member states reached a deal early Saturday on the Digital Service Act. The DSA is a landmark piece of legislation. It will require big tech firms to quickly rid their platforms of illegal content. Failure to comply with the rules may result in up to a 6% of companies' global annual revenue. Wow. Again, money is the very tool that they've used to keep people um, in line. It, it, it's, it's exactly what they've done. And the, and the real cheek of that is, and Henry Ford said this, I've got to do and I'm going to do a public review of the book that I've got from the 1920s that was wrote by Henry. Um, essentially, he, he, one of the chapters says, money, servant or master. Uh, and he's also very famously quoted as saying, look, it's a good job that the citizens of the United States don't understand what money is and how the monetary system works. Otherwise, there'd be a revolution by the morning. He's quoted, by, quoted for saying that. And the reason being is because, yes, they use it to, to basically control people. Um, but at the same time, it, it, it's really a, an ideology at best. Um, it's not backed necessarily by anything other than the might of the army um, that, that you know, the currency is behind, essentially. Um, the European Union agrees on a new digital regulation Saturday that will enforce tech giants like Google and Meta to police illegal content on their platform more aggressively or else risk potentially multi-billion dollar fines. The European Parliament and EU member states reached a deal on Saturday. Um, my big concern is what do they, what do they deem as illegal? You know, also you've got TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, um, Facebook, uh, essentially all main social media platforms. The EU is now saying we get to censor and di dictate what we want on those platforms and what we don't and what we consider illegal. Now, yes, there is a, definitely an argument for taking down content out there that is of a, um, extremely damaging and disturbing nature. But at the same time, there's also a huge argument that, you know, there's probably a lot of people who, who say things um, that are true, that get their um, platform shut down um, or, or their um, social media shut down based on the fact that the European Union probably doesn't like what they're saying. That's scary and it's a lot more control and censorship that do we really need it um, or are they just moving more aggressively on this sort of things on these sort of things because they understand that you know everything that we've seen from March 2020 onwards and and I had these uh, opinions beforehand um, but I think for a lot of people a lot of people that you know would never believe you know looked at people like conspiracy nuts they're now kind of going well hang on um everything that's happened in the last two years plus just doesn't make sense it doesn't add up and there's definitely more than meets the eye here so that is really all I have for you in this video, guys. If you have enjoyed this content, a like is always appreciated. So is a comment. And I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next YouTube video. Have a great Saturday, everyone. And I'll catch you in the next one.